Greetings to one and all joining us for this pre-recorded show. Early doors on Tuesday for the Wednesday meeting, the 23rd of October, where racing takes place in KwaZulu Natal. Hollywood Bets Gravel on the Poly Track. Joining me in studio, none other than Dees Diamond. Dees, a seven race program doesn't look all that easy. Yeah, it looks like a race meeting where you want to try and uh, chase the exotics. It's a late start as well, 12.50, as the guys would have known because of the uh, race meeting that was no more on Sunday. We've had a lot of rain here in KZN. Hopefully it stays away for this Wednesday card and we kick things off in race number one, which will begin the bar pot and the PA. That's important with seven races, so two exotics start off in race number one. Right, let's get straight on to the betting for race number one, which is the opening leg of the bar pot and the place accumulator. 12.50 the card at off time. Number nine, Lady of Vex is your 14 to 10 favorite. Number four, dressed to the nine, seven to two. Dairani, four to one, and then feel the wind at nine to two. Five to one, affirmative. These looking at the first strays, to pinpoint a winner and nail your colours to the mast, not all that easy. Not all that easy, but I think everything will point to the favourite, Lady of Vix. I did watch the replay of her debut, which was back on the 17th of July. So she's been off for over three months. Uh, I see Lancaster since being a subsequent winner. He's a horse that I know Garrett Fanzale rates. They've taken him down, uh, taken her down to uh, Cape Town uh, for the, the season. They're hoping that she can do well there. Uh, so she was, um, you know... She's had a lot of pace and speed. Um, she's been off, so she'll need luck from the draw. Uh, she's having a first run on the poly track. She'll have to answer a few questions. I think in the bipod and the place accumulator, horses to look out for. Number four, dressed to the nines. Although she's taking time to win that maiden, her recent runs with the blinkers have been good. And Diarani, although she was well beaten by Disting, I think against this type of field, she'll, she'll have a chance if she's ready. You know, I said that Lady of Vix has been off. Well, look at her. She's been off for six months, number 60, Arani. And then the joker of the pack could be number three, Feel the Wind, who's a blinker strike. So, you know, I can't give anybody confidence to have a go on the head. My suggestion is play to survive the first leg of the PA and the bar pot and just, you know, spread your numbers out. Well, there we go from Dee's Dinan in race number one for the exotics. Look for numbers six and nine. Number six and nine should hopefully see you through race number one. Well, it's an unusual start uh, for a race number to get off a pick six. You don't usually see a pick six starts in race number two, but it will on Wednesday. 1325 will start off the pick six with the seven races carded. It's a maiden plate over 1,000 meters. And again, we remind you of the time, 1325. Let's bring up the field. Have a look at the runners that are in the betting. Uh, I did take this betting down early. Maybe there are changes, but just as a guide, number one at 22 to 10, three at seven to one, five is at seven to one, six at 11 to two, and horse number eight is at two to one. So in the first race, uh, very difficult to single out a winner unless you really like something, you're going to go for it. And I feel the same in the second race, Sheldon, because uh, this horse of Paul Lafferty, whilst the appeal is there in black and white, uh, he's holding his form. I must just add that his last start behind I Salute You, uh, it's, it's not a, a strong form line at all. So, uh, you know, I can't give the guys confidence again in race number two, although he's possibly the horse that will set the standard. Right, race number two, number one mind map opened up five to two, and the money has certainly come for number one mind map. Has shortened down to 16 to 10, so there's anti-post support. Beware, it is a maiden plate over a thousand meters, so take note, it's a maiden plate, and keep a close eye on the runners here. And just looking at the individual mine map, has found the early support brings some fair Cape Town form to KwaZulu Natal. The form lines have been franked, dropping to a thousand on the poly, 
maybe a set of cheat pieces from the one draw. I think number one, mind map, won't get an easier opportunity. Dees? Yeah, it looks that way, Sheldon, because, uh, you know, he's got the Cape form lines. He, all he needs to do is take to the poly track. He's got the draw. You mentioned the equipment change. If he repeats his penultimate start, he'll go very close to winning it. But uh, again, you know, good living. All the runs have been at Hollywood Bet Scottsville. So first run on the poly track as well. Numbers one and uh, eight, they look the part here for place accumulator and bar pot. But then this horse number three, Mo King, and I'm just going with the pattern. If you go to his good run behind Helsinki, good run, bad, good, bad, good, bad. He's due for a good run. And I'm just going with the pattern. He seems to save his best races for the poly track as well. So looking at the field, you know, I'm not going to be convinced with number one or number eight. So I'm going to look for the value here and suggest that horse number three at seven to one is going to be my top choice. Yep, I've made up my mind. You know, I've looked at this race. Now that I'm looking at it and having a look at the form, horses that are trying on the poly track, horses that are, you know, not giving you any confidence in black and white. I'm going to go with, with number three. Let me make my choice here. I'm going to go number three, Mo King, to beat number one, Mind Map, and eight, Good Living. There we go. So race number two, Dees is in the camp of number three, Mo King. That'll be my second selection. I'm going to stick with the money horse number one, Mind Map, and believe this individual has the greater scope for improvement. So numbers one and three for race number two at Hollywood Bets Grable. As we move along to race number three, which is over 1,400 meters, and the top three in the betting are unraced horses. They're all first-timers. Number one, Meritorious, is 5 to 2. Number two, Mocha Blender, 28 to 10. And then Seeking Space, number three, at 9 to 2. Along with number five, D-Day. And then number eight, Run for Peace, at sevens, 8 to 1, and better the rest. Dees, now looking at race number three, Meritorious is a daughter of Ideal World out of the Strike Smartly Mare, No More Screws. Mocha Blend, an Ideal World out of the Silvano Mare, Mocha Special, and then Seeking Space, Royal Mo out of the Trippy Mare, Seeking Venus. So numbers one, two, and three, just looking at the comments, they're nice types, they're going to come along nicely. Seeking Space, Louis Hurst will obviously give a comment come race day. But looking at the field, numbers one, two, or three don't have to be anything special to make a winning debut. I agree. I agree. I, I mean, that's the way I looked at it. Of the race runners, there's an absolute standout here. If they had to price up, let's, say, let's take out the first timers. If they had to price up between the race runners, I'd say number five would have been priced up in the red. Because I don't see any of the other runners uh, compare when it comes to what uh, the Philly. Uh, brings to the table on a recent form lines number five d-day she's nicely drawn it's a small field she enjoys racing up pandy uh, she's going to be in front unless one of these first timers have the pace and speed which i doubt so she's going to be in front she's going to dictate cole dickens knows her from a form line of her last start uh, third in that race was uh, com Naidu's runner called jet lavish that has come out to win uh, we know that she gets 1,600 meters, so she is the right horse of the race runners. Of the unraced runners, I looked up some pedigree, Sheldon. Number two, Mocha Blend is a half-sister to Barra Hen, trained by Mike de Kock. Barra Hen beat uh, um, Socrat as a juvenile. It was in that uh, golden horse shoe on uh, July day. Barra Hen, I think was partnered by Bernard Fader, if I'm not mistaken beating Socrat and I think went on to win the charity mile so she's got a lovely peregrine number two of the race runners I'm going to say that possibly she could be the best but I have a lot of respect for Dean Canamayo's runner Meritorious so in leg one of the jackpot uh, where the first timer rule does not apply so this is where you're going to have to look sharp in the pick six you can possibly exclude numbers one two and three and maybe go banker five but for the jackpot, where that first-timer rule does not apply, you're going to have to consider including these first-timers along with number five. So you mentioned Louis Corson says that he'll give a comment on race day. I'll possibly wait for that before I put on that jackpot. But at this stage of the game, numbers one, two, and five for me, and maybe number three, if you get the confidence from the yard. 
Well, there we go. The first three are unraced, so we'll find out a little bit more about them on race day. But of the race runners, I think dropping to the 1400 meter trip, number five, D-Day, does set the trend, although having the 14th attempt, but I think a lot in her favor. And if the first timers aren't all that streetwise, it might be D-Day's winning day. Our race number four will be jackpot two races four, five, six, and seven. You need to work your perm out. Uh, this is a maiden plate over 1600 meters, and uh, you need to get on by 1435. As we bring up the field and have a look at some betting, I mentioned that I did take down the betting uh, on Sunday. That's when I took down the betting, but there may be changes since then. I just want to have a look if there are any changes quickly, if I may. Uh, fixtures coming up for Wednesday and yep, Hollywood bets, Gravel will just have to go on. It's very quick with these devices, I must add. Uh, in race number four, uh, horse number one uh, is at four to one, number two at 33 to 10, number three at six to one, four is a seven to one shot. Five, Prince Florian is the favorite at nine to four and six at eight to one. Let's begin with Prince Florian. And before we even touch on the form, Sheldon, you know, you've seen this uh, in all the years gone by um, as you've worked on course and of course as a commentator as well. There are trends that are set throughout the season when it comes to stables that are in form and off form. You, jockeys have it, even owners have it, but more importantly when it comes to stables. Dean Kanamea is just going through that patch. It, it seems to be a quiet patch for him. He's also not running badly, don't get me wrong. But they just can't seem to find the number one box here in KZN. But it looks like it's going to turn because the horses are running well. And maybe this could be the horse that could turn things around. I agree with you. I think this is the individual that could break the ice. This is a horse who is starting to knock on that door very loudly after that successful debut in fifth behind Got the Word. Came from 10th position, just over 10 lengths behind them. That was over 1,400 metres, so it'll be a lot more cosy and comfortable over the 1,600, I believe. Lost two lengths, green ran on. So the water winter, the Dean Canamaya outfit, they're going to start turning the corner, and when the winners start flowing, they're going to come thick and fast. So I'm going to go with number five, Prince Florian. If not just needing that one more run, I believe he could be too good for this field. Number two, Magma Magic, and number one, Brave Bomber. They look to represent the main dangers. And then number nine, Mr. Fix It, at around 14 to one. I've picked this up as an exacta and trifecta horse. I think uh, if he enjoys the step up in distance, no doubt there could be serious improvement to come from him. Way too short for him, 1100 meters, number nine. And as he drifted out in the betting market, one could say he ran accordingly. But he started to grab your attention as he started to pass the stragglers over the final 300 meters or so. There could be huge improvement from number nine, Mr. Fixit. But both Sheldon and I think that this could be the turning point. The turning point from uh, the Canamea stable with number five, Prince Florian. All he needs to do is just build on that debut run. He's going to enjoy the step up in distance. And hopefully he's not as far back as he was when making his debut. I suspect that from draw number five, Craig Zach, he will be hoping that he can have him in a nice favorable position turning into the straight and I see him winning. You made numbers one, two and nine, your trifecta quartet horses, I must agree with that. If you're looking for cover with number five, Prince Florian in leg one of jackpot two, and numbers one and two look the obvious dangers. But we're gonna take a chance here. Come on, Dean Kadamaya. Back into the number one box. Stepping on the gas as we move on to race number five, races five, six, and seven to negotiate. And looking at the bidding for race number five, which is over a trip of 1,600 meters. Number one, Le Altimo is at three to one. Last time out from around about 10 and 12 to one, back down three to one, came through to win. Number five, Wave Warrior, coming with some very, very consistent form. That is your second favorite at three to one. Number three, which is one Irish Rover, 33 to 10, and Forest Jump is at nine to two. These number one, Le Ultimo, I liked last time out. I made this my value bet on the card. I'm a little bit concerned about the 
step up to the mile. I think 1400 is the ideal trip for the Ultimo, but in tremendous form at the moment. You can't discount this individual? Whew. You know, this is a complicated race. And I'll tell you why. I mean, we're not going to say it's complicated and leave it there. Numbers one, four, five, and nine come from the form line behind Kirari's dream. Numbers two, three, and seven come from the form line behind La Altima. You'll see their weight reversals, draw turnarounds. Now, how do you try and you know sift out the winner from horses that are finished on top of each other? So, looking at the race, you know. The horses that don't come from that form line don't give you much confidence. Number nine, eight is one of them, gorgeous dude. And then uh, the other runner will be uh, horse uh, number, what's it, uh, yeah, number six, uh, uh, Plettenberg. So those two runners don't give you much confidence, and they are the two runners that don't come from the form line. I'm going to take a big fly here, Sheldon. You know, often you get that gut feeling. Uh, you can't explain it. The horse looks held on form. When I opened up this race and I just went through it, the horse that jumped off the page was Count Marsh. And, I, and then I looked up his profile and, and I saw that, you know, when he won his maiden, he was rated at 80 and he had to drop right down to, uh, I think it was a 58 to win again. And he's now racing off a 56. I know he won those races quick, you know, this, uh, the second, third and fourth in a matter of five or six runs which saw him go up to a rating of you know, around the 70s. I think it was 73. But since then, he's been low on confidence and he's dropped right down. Um, they've gone with the tongue tie along with the blinkers and he's run okay with the tongue tie. From his last start, tried and true, you know, who was second in that race. I mentioned the form line behind Le Altimo is one of the runners. He was well beaten by Le Altimo, but tried and true did come out to win next up at the Val. But this is something that I feel in this type of field that if he gets you know, some luck in running, he's going to be my value in the race. I can't give you any degree of confidence. It's my gut feel, which I want to pass on to the viewers. Uh, he looks held on all accounts on that run behind Le Altimo. But if he comes back to some of his better runs, you know, the run that I singled out, if he repeats that run to Bally Magic, I think he goes close to winning. I'm going to use him as a roving banker and quartets, but it does look like a field race for me. Well, at around 8 to 1 and 10 to 1, number 7, Count Marsh. He's been on my radar for quite some time now. And the only things against him, if it was a 1400, I'd yeah. be very, very confident. 1400 from a 4 or a 3 draw, I'd say let's go and get stuck in. Just needs to get lucky. He's always drawn out 8, 9. They've got to use up a little bit of gas early on. And if Daryl Daniels can get the right tune out of him, although it's been 721 days, just having a look currently around 8 and 10 to 1 could certainly be the value in this contest. The Robbie Hill team will have this individual at his peak. He is a 7-year-old, so he is tried and tested, and he could be the value in this event, number 7, Count Marsh. Once you look beyond them, Forest Jump, Le Altimo, One Irish Rover, Brave Voyager, Wave Warrior, the list goes on and on. It's going to be like a shopping list. So both these and I are recommending that the value is number seven, Count Marsh. And if this individual gets some luck in the running and slides across easily, gets into a good position, the 10 to 1 could be real value. Well, it's the last double on the card race number six. Phillies and mares divided handicap. 1,400 meters the distance. And if you want to play the last double, you'll need to get on by 15.50. So I see it's a nice early end to the race meeting. 15.50 uh, race number six. And as we bring up the field, we'll give you the betting. Oh, number one add seven to one. Number two add four to one. Three years add eight to one. Four add two to one. Six at nine to four and seven at nine to two. Before I hand over to Sheldon, I'm going to state my case. I've been waiting for this race. I'm going to make this the best bet on the card. Miss Pageant is her name. Alison Wright and Atan Diwem Gutla watched her closely after that break back in June. Her comeback run, she did surprise me. I must admit, I didn't expect it to run uh, that well fresh, but she put in an excellent performance behind the Highly rated Perilla from the Dennis Bosch Yard. Last time out, she also ran a good race considering where she was drawn. Two and a half lengths behind Skytrix. 
against this type of field, yes, there's always opposition. Third run back, loves racing on the poly track, and I think that she will be spot on for the win. I'm going to make her the best bet on the card, Sheldon. I can't tip you anything else in the race as a danger because I like her a lot. And what's her price again? Two to one. I'm going to say come race time, she starts much shorter than that. She won't get two to one. Well, there we go. Dees is mentioning that number four, Miss Paget. The two to one will be snapped up in probably around 14 to 10, 15 to 10 race time. A multiple course and distance winner. So Miss Paget number four will be a popular selection. Now, the Wendy Whitehead stable send out two runners. Number one, Redu, from 10 to 1 down 7 to 1. The anti post market speaks about number one, Redu. This is a daughter of Rabada, a five year old bay mare in and out form. So we're not quite sure how she's doing in KwaZulu Natal. So I think she's worth a mention. But number five, Mauritania at 33 to 1. That could be the swing and exacta horse with number four, Miss Paget. And the reason being, if you go back to the 10th of January, 16 to 1, I made her my value bet, she kept going. Two runs later, we back to when she beat Baby on board, and then she's just gone off the boil. Ntrolisi, Mbuta, will take the four kilograms off the back, and I think this is a horse who could just about go start to finish. So race number six, number four, Miss Paget. That will be the horse they all have to beat. And then number five, Mauritania. Number one, Redu. And number six, The Ghost. They all have equal chances. But these and I, numbers four and five. And hopefully we'll get some exactors, swingers and trifectas. On to the seventh and final event, and this is over a trip of 1,400 meters. Race number seven is the Hollywood Bets Bright Future 68 Divided Handicap. This is for the fillies and mares to bring down the curtain on racing. And let's just have a look at the current betting. Number four, Ginger Delight, a very short priced favorite at 12 to 10, having the run for the Dean Canemayer outfit, 63 days off the track. Number one, Beautiful Rania from 4 to 1 is now 33 to 10. And she's run some fair races at the Maidens. And then after that, we go to Perfect Trust, which I made my each way selection for the day. And it's a very difficult card. And the reason I've made number two, Perfect Trust, my each way selection, I think the distance suits. Ntrolise Mbuta will take the four kilograms off the back, and she's also horse who likes to be up in the vanguard. So a seven-year-old daughter of Vercingetorix hasn't won for 539 days, but I think this could be her time to shine. So for me, Dees, it's number two, Perfect Trust. I'm just taking a flyer because there's nothing I can give you some real confidence on. You could be right because, you know, she's got a very low weight with the young man claiming four. Uh, and she's got the draw of two. There's only one way that uh, he is going to go with her. She is going to dictate to the young apprentice on how she wants to race. And that's racing up handy. If it was a 1,200 with this young kid on, I would have said, go for it. But 1,400 meters, I just have a slight question mark. I know that she's won twice over the distance, but uh, this young kid will need to time it right. It's not a sprint to the line over 1,400 meters, so you need to see save a bit of gas uh, over the final 200. And if you can do just that, I think Sheldon could be onto something here with number two, perfect trust. But if number six, uh, in race number six, if Miss Pageant wins, I think there's going to be proper follow-throughs here with number one, beautiful Rania. If that wins, this uh, what's the price of the Zorsia in, in the last race? Beautiful Rania. 33 so, to 10 from 4 to 1. Yeah, that's not going to... I mean, that 33 to 10 now that's been back from 4 to 1, if Miss Pageant wins, the form line is going to be followed through here. Yeah, this will start much shorter as well. Because I think Dennis Bosch has just given this filly two nice warm-up runs. 14 to 1. There was money for her last time out just to keep you interested. Muzi tried to overcome the draw. She got a bit tired. Uh, she wasn't beaten far behind Sky Trick. She's got the draw now. Muzi would have learned a lot from that run. These top boys, the boys that are... You know, on top of the jockey logs, they don't need too many chances to get it right. And I think Muzi, that one try would have been good enough for him. He would have learnt a lot from this filly. He's got the draw now. She's having a third run back. She's going to be my top choice. Number one, beautiful Rania to beat. Number two, Sheldon's choice, perfect trust. And then the unknown in the race is Ginger, Bisc uh, Ginger Delight. 
Uh, she's, I say unknown because she's having a first run for Dean Canamea. She used to be with Tony Peter. Her form lines are good. If you pull them out, you'll see they are winners uh, from her form lines up in Karteng. So she's the unknown in the race. And the one plus with her is not about her taking to the poly track because that's an unknown. It's the fact that she stayed 1,600 meters last time out. So Craig Zaki will have no doubt uh, giving her a nice confident ride because 14.50, 1,500, 1,600 meters, she does stay well this filly. And if she's ready, then she could be the horse to beat. I think she's a deserved favorite. So she'll get my vote for the pick. I'm just going to go one, two, and uh, four for the pick six here, Sheldon. If I have to tip them in order of preference, one, two, hey, just the way it is. One, two, and four. Yeah, that's the way I tip them as well. One, two, and four. There's just one other horse I want to include, and Talk that's the me. horse number three, Kitten's Adventure. I'm with you. 20 to one. If it was a 1,200, I'd be a lot more confident. But a horse with ability, although coming towards the end of the career, it might be a nice jolt for the exotics. Well, if you've got that in your pick six, you'll definitely drop tickets here because that is a big price. So if you're looking for a nice result in race number seven, maybe number three, Kittens and Venture. But to wrap it up, Sheldon thinks all the kid needs to do is hold on tight. Let her tell you what she wants to do. Uh, number two, Perfect Trust. And she could go all the way to the line with the front running tactics. I think that beautiful Rania is going to be right there with Muzi Yeni. A joker of the pack number four, Ginger Delight. First one for Dean Canamea. And if you're looking for a rough result, well, look for the kitten. Kitten's Adventure, number three. And that's a wrap. Sheldon, it's been a pleasure doing the show. I know that you are going to be doing the uh, uh, selection show where you're going to give them your best bet on the card. But uh, seven races carded. There is exotics to play for, but it looks like a card where uh, you need a lot of luck on your side. Plenty of luck. You're going to need lady luck. You're going to have to study the form very hard. And you're going to need some more luck to get into the winner's enclosure. But as you, the punter, hopefully your horses run as fast as they can and end up in the winner's enclosure for you. Welcome back for the suggested bet on the card. And when studying the card, very, very difficult to pinpoint a selection or an exotic. So what I did was I looked at race seven, number two, Perfect Trust, although it hasn't won in 539 days. I just thought that the seven-year-old daughter of Vercingetorix with a posted stamp, 49 and a half kilograms on the back. Mkholisi Mbuto will ride, taking the four kgs off. From that number two draw, and the type of horse who likes to gallop up there, two wins over the distance. Had it been 1,200 metres, I'd say let's put and take. But the 1,400 metre trip suits her, and if she gets the run of the race, I believe that she's going to run an absolute cracker. So race seven, number two, perfect trust. That is the each way selection. And if you're looking for a total spook, number three, Kitten's Adventure for the exactors and the swingers. Have a top day's racing at Hollywood Bets Grable.